even in my time in the industry, I mean, there's really been a transition from that paper record to what now has really become prevalent in the industry, mobile record keeping. So, you know, in the past, um, with Southwest in particular, we had a subset of clients that used to fax their records in. And then we have a team of data entry representatives that would put that in, you know, send any questions back to the producers, get some answers. Um, and then we would send out some reports uh, from there. But now everything is transitioning to that mobile record keeping. So, you know, we're entering data in real time and we're really able to take a proactive approach to that uh, analysis and reporting standpoint. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest Swine Health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me on this week's episode is Shalimar Martin. Shalimar is on the Production Insights team at Southwest Vets up in Canada. Shalimar, thank you so much for coming on the podcast with us. Uh, if you would, why don't you give the audience a little introduction and background? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Johnson. So my name is Shalmar Martin. Um, like you mentioned, I'm with Production Insights at Southwest Vets. So basically, our focus is everything data and analytics related. Uh, my educational background is actually on the human side. So I specialized in health sciences. And then in 2017, I transitioned into the agricultural world and have been in it ever since. And I love it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you've certainly seen a lot of change in the agricultural world since 2017, right? Mm -hmm. um, you've seen uh, an emerging concern of African swine fever that has really swept the world over that course of time. Um, you have seen uh, uh, the, the impacts to COVID and packing plant disruptions have had on our industry. You've seen the, the challenges we've had as an industry over the last two years, right? Profitability, inflation, input prices going up all sorts of, of difficult situations. And I know, um, Shalimar, you're here to talk about records. And records mm -hmm. have obviously you know, changed wildly through the years of when it was our grandparents doing the farming and they knew every pig by name, right? To then maybe it was our parents' generation and they had some handwritten records. And now we've all got smartphones full of more information than we know what to do with. So Shalimar, talk to us about that evolution of record keeping over time. How has that been beneficial to producers and where are we at today? Yeah, absolutely. So it's exactly how you describe it, right? I mean, I have a colleague who talks about his family farm growing up and uh, how they used to take index cards. And when they were looking up histories of a sow, kind of dig through that. Um, and then when they needed any sort of analytics or things like that, they would save their data onto a floppy disk, you know, send that out to their veterinarian, wait a few weeks for it to come back uh, and then do some uh, analysis and reporting from that standpoint. But, um, yeah, even in my short five years or what are we now? <laughs> Eight years almost. I'm like, oh, my yeah. gosh, really? Time really has flown. It's a long five years. years. Yes, yes. But um, yeah, even in my time in the industry, I mean, there's really been a transition from that paper record to what now has really become prevalent in the industry, mobile record keeping. So, you know, in the past um, with Southwest in particular, we had a subset of clients that used to fax their records in. And then we have a team of data entry representatives that would put that in you know, send any questions back to the producers, get some answers, um, and then we would send out some reports uh, from there. But now everything is transitioning to that mobile record keeping. So, you know, we're entering data in real time and we're really able to take a proactive approach to that uh, analysis and reporting standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. So really that focus on mobile record keeping has evolved in, I'd say, the last couple of years. Curious to discover if you can manage your animal data and team's work with the touch of a finger? Some of the best and largest pig farm holdings worldwide use cloud farms to collect and analyze data like never before. How? With the most advanced mobile app to collect data accurately and super fast. For breeding, farrowing, weaning, and finishing. Also, this is the easiest way to assign tasks to your team and motivate to work more efficiently. You instantly understand what gets done on time and what doesn't. So yes, you can manage your animal data with the touch of a finger. 
what do you mean by mobile record keeping, right? Um, is, is, are the, the people that enter in the handwritten records, are they driving to the farm and that's how it's mobile? Like what, what does mobile record keeping look like for maybe a producer or a farmer that is still doing the handwritten records? Yeah. So I think if like the mobile approach is really, instead of writing things down on paper on farm, there's a couple devices, you know, maybe one in breeding, one in farrowing, and then you have some of your team members actually doing that data entry south side. So that's kind of really where it shifted from that handwritten records to south side data entry. And how does that data entry work? Are they um, uh, typing it into a phone instead of uh, handwritten records? Do we access yeah. the, the information via like QR codes, barcodes, stuff like that? How, how, does it, how does it practically work on the farm? Yeah, exactly. So there's, there's a couple different ways uh, depending on how the farm set, is set up. So if you are a farm that has ESF or something like that and you have the RFID uh, readers in the style ears, you know, maybe there's a wand that you can use to scan that RFID and that would actually populate that sow ID in your data entry experience. Um, and then maybe if you're a farm that doesn't have ESF or anything like that, there is the capability to print sow cards that have that QR code. Um, and I get kind of that same experience. You kind of scan that QR code, populates the sow ID, got your history for that animal at uh, your fingertips and then can proceed on with your data entry there. Yep. And I can see how on a sow farm that uh, makes sense because every sow has a card, has an individual ID. So whether it's handwritten with the individual ID or QR codes that become the ID, um, I can see how that translates. What about finishing farms? Um, is there anything going on with mobile records on finishing farms or is that kind of a different beast and it's just going to be a different situation? Yeah, I think there's still that side is evolving, but um, it does exist in present day. Uh, you know, you can assign a batch for your your nursery or your finisher and kind of track real time mortality, real time treatment records. And again, you're really with doing that mobile data entry, you're really taking that proactive approach. You can see how many animals you're treating. Is there a spike in mortality? Things like that. Whereas previously, you know, you'd be entering your data and record keeping platforms and taking a retrospective approach like this has already happened. Whereas with that real time data entry, you have the capability to start those conversations around herd health and how can we impact things now before it's too late, I guess you could say. Gotcha. Um, you mentioned before farms with ESF systems. Um, certainly our, our feed technology, or I should say our feed record keeping is, uh, generally like a different database than our performance record keeping is, whether it's an ESF system or, um, you know, any of the other feed record, record keeping softwares that are out there. Do we have an uh, ability to merge some of that stuff? Like at the dashboard level, if, and if I'm a producer, do, am I always doomed to have to log into each individual database independently or? Or is there going to be a point where I can go to one central location and utilize, leverage all this information all at that one spot? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So there is that uh, capability present day. So, you know, some reproductive softwares out there do have integrations with certain feeding system platforms. And uh, historically, like you said, we would have had to do data entry in both platforms. But now we're really shifting to like one source of truth. And then those records would push into the feeding software to really like save time for producers. So, you know, maybe all of your breed dates, your farrow dates, your wean dates, things like that would push over. And then that can help, um, again, just using an ESF as an example, help management, manage your separation, your vaccination separations, things like that. Excellent. So mm -hmm. if it can work at the office level, let's talk, talk about practical implementation at the farm. Um, what challenges have you seen with maybe transitioning to like mobile records at the farm level and what tips and tricks do you have for overcoming those? Absolutely. I think probably like the biggest challenge that we have with getting firms to transition to mobile record entry is kind of that trust piece, right? Because in the past, if you were doing paper records or something like that, typically it was only one person touching the data, right? Whereas if you switch to mobile record keeping, you're kind of bringing in some different hands. And I think that that's kind of like the biggest challenge. Um, so it's just getting over that trust piece. But, you know, once we've gone on to site and kind of um, involved the team, 
everybody really actually starts to take accountability of their own role on the farm, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, I think there was just that fear of, you know, I used to do this, but now kind of passing the torch to somebody else, there's the fear of, are they going to make mistakes, things like that. But in our experience, we've, that's been really great. There's been a lot of engagement and everybody feels involved. There's a lot more communication. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the recipe for a good program right there. If you've got engagement, you got communication, you got buy-in. Uh, I don't know what other ingredients you would need to implement a new technology, which admittedly is very difficult. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, just, just along the lines with after we get that implemented too, I mean, kind of around that communication piece, you do start to see that real time reporting and those real time flags popping up. You know, maybe there's a spike in abortions. Again, we talked about this from the wean to finish side, but maybe there's a spike in mortality or something like that. When you have multiple eyes looking at the data, you know, I might be looking at something, the producer might be looking at something and we're all just kind of engaging in conversation about what we see. Mm -hmm. It's just been, it's been really good. Excellent. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. You can't manage what you don't measure. I was going to say that's that key line. <laughs> yeah, it's cliche, but it's very true in our industry. And Shalimar, I appreciate what you're doing for the producers up there to help make their data more transparent and help them address problems that inevitably are going to pop up on pig farms. Thanks for helping those Absolutely. producers and thanks for coming on the podcast for helping to educate our audience on it. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. <laughs> yeah. Well, we couldn't do it without the audience. So for everybody out there listening, thanks for being a part of this. Please check out our website at swinehealthblackbelt.com and uh, subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. For Shalimar Martin, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. This has been the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. We appreciate you joining us. Please have a great rest of your day. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.